The following is an instant classic. What's going on, everybody? It's your guy, Five Boys Deke here. I'm going to keep it 92 plus 8 with y'all, man. I have been taking some really bad L's in the games that I thought would be entertaining. Take a look. This is Ole Miss taking on North Carolina A&T, and I got absolutely blown out of the water. So I had to do myself a favor, stop recording those, because... It's not entertaining for you, it's not entertaining for me. I had to go through every HBCU roster and find the teams that I feel like are good based off the ratings. So those teams will be Alcorn State, South Carolina State, Arkansas Pine Bluff, Morgan State, Norfolk State. Today, we're using Alcorn State and they will be taking on Alabama. That's right, I'm gonna need you to trust me, okay? You guys know the rules. I have to use the HBCU team on the road and I have to use their offense. Take a look at this roster right here. Their quarterback is a 72 overall with 84 throwing power and 80 accuracy. Their running back number 33, 56 overall, 76 speed, 56 strength, 56 awareness, 72 agility, 78 acceleration, and a catcher rating of 56. He also has a breaking tackle rating of 62. Fullback is a 72 overall. That's kind of new. These wide receivers. Do y'all see this? 96 speed and 97 speed and 90 speed from my slot. I know you lying. 82 overall, 82 overall, 97 acceleration, 98 acceleration, all the agility in the 90s. Come on now. Come on. I told y'all, trust me. Trust me on this one. Tight end in the rest of the offense, 40s and 50s all throughout. Take a look at the defense. Just about everybody, again, in the 40s and 50s. They do have some good players along the linebacker core, the left and right outside linebackers are in the 60s and 70s. Cornerbacks, they got speed, low overall. They got speed, but low overall. And then let's go over to Alabama now and take a look at the free safety and strong safety of Alcorn State. That is John Parker Wilson for you right there with an 84 overall, 78 awareness. Went to play for the Atlanta Falcons as a backup for Matt Ryan for a couple of years. 89 throwing power, 88 throwing accuracy. That's Glenn Coffey, number 38, with 88 speed. 88 acceleration, 87 agility, 82 carrying, breaking tackles at an 86 rating there. Looking at the wide receivers, 90 overall, 89 overall, that's DJ Hall and Keith Brown respectively. Both have 92 speed. Taking a look at the rest of the offense, 80s and 90s throughout. The best player though is the center. He's 94 overall, that's the best player, the center. And I do need to say, this Alabama team, this was the first year that Nick Saban took over. So this isn't the Alabama that everyone knows now, this is a different type of Alabama. Look at the defense, the defense is pretty good too. Um, they have a number one cornerback by the name of Simeon Castile, 92 overall, 91 speed. And then you take a look at your safeties and they are, they're good too, they're both in the 80s. This is an SEC team, we know this. I get the ball first, it's first and 10, taking a snap out of the gun, rolling out of the pocket, finding a man, that's a first down number five. We're gonna get this thing two plays later, second and 10 throwing. It is caught by number 82. I'm already using my wide receiver duo. They both got a catch so far. Two plays later, it's second and 10. Ball at the 39. I see something I like. It's man-on-man -oh -man coverage. We're going to go ahead, throw that bad boy deep, and it is caught inside the 25-yard line. That is a first down Alcorn State. Very next play. It's first and 10. Taking the snap out of the gun. Trying to get the crowd out of this game as early as we can. Throwing this thing into the goal line. It's caught. Touchdown Braves and Alcorn State takes the early 7-0 lead. This is an absolute dot. He barely got this ball across the across the, the line, the plane, I should say, but it counts. First and 10 for Alabama, faking a handoff to Glenn Coffey. There's Parker Wilson throwing that pass is batted down and incomplete. Second and 10, Parker Wilson in the I formation here. Taking the snap, gonna give this thing to Coffey with a little juke move, getting the first down inside Braves territory. And it's first and 10 for Alabama. So now ball at the 46-yard line. Alabama still in the eye formation, dropping back the pass. Parker Wilson is sacked. Oh, yeah. Alcorn got a squad now. Alcorn got a squad. Second and 14, taking the snap out of the gun, faking the handoff to Coffee. Wilson, middle of the field, wide open man. That is a first down for the Crimson Tide, finding DJ Hall there. Ball at the 36-yard line. 
Gonna go ahead and give this thing the coffee, a little juke, juke, jukey, and a touchdown Crimson Tide. And the game is tied at seven apiece. Glenn Coffey, man, he's got some speed on him now. Got some speed on him, and that does not help when you have a slow defense. So first and 10 for Alcorn State. I don't know what I was calling here. This is an absolutely idiotic play. Try to run the end around, and I end up losing, I think, 12 yards? Yeah, second and 22 here. Snap out of the gun, gonna look, gonna throw that thing up top, and it is overthrown. No biggie. I'm gonna do it. I'm gonna, you know, go to him again. Third and 22. Incomplete. He dropped it. He dropped my ball. You dropped my football. So we had to punt, give the ball back to Alabama. Parker Wilson throwing, and this pass is intercepted. An INT for Alcorn State, and we get the ball right on back. I told y'all they got a squad, man. First and 10, looking to throw. Caught on the slant route by number five. It looked like it almost got intercepted by my own player. Second and five, taking the snap from under center. Throwing, it's another slant. That's number 82 with a first down, Alcorn State. Facing a second and 10 now. I'm liking what I'm seeing from this, uh, from this formation. The defense is... Give me all kinds of stuff. You got to take what the defense gives you. That's a first down there for the Braves going to number 82. First and 10 here, ball in Alabama territory. Going to run the option play. We're going to get about a gain of three there. And I'll take that when you don't really have the best running back. I'll just, you know, I'll take whatever. I make an adjustment here as we end the first quarter going up top. And this pass is caught. Touchdown, Alcorn State. Oh, them boys came to play. Them boys came to play. 14-7 at the end of the first quarter. To the second quarter. It's first and 10. They'll hand this thing to Glenn Coffey. He'll find some room. He'll get to the outside and see you later. Bye. First play of the second quarter is a touchdown for Alabama. Untouched. Untouched. Defense was nowhere to be found at all. However, I'm showing you special teams for one of two reasons. Big play of boo-boo, right? Big play. We blocked the extra point. It is 14-13. My man reached out, blocked the PAT, and it's a 14-13 lead for the Braves, and we're getting the ball with a chance to extend the lead. Taking the snap, looking, throwing the slant route, getting the first down and more. That's number five inside Alabama territory. Gain of 22. Now it's first and 10. Taking the snap, looking. Throwing up top. We got a man. It's caught. Touchdown, Braves. It only took two plays for Alcorn to get in the end zone, and these boys got a squad. First and 10 with a 21-13 lead. Here's John Parker Wilson. I formation. Going to drop back the pass. Look, throws. Glenn Coffey taken down in the backfield. I like that from my defense. Second and 12. Taking a snap out of the gun. Wilson. It's caught. It's taken down almost immediately. And is now third and five. Got to get a stop. Got to get a stop. Wilson, all day to throw. Going to his right. This pass is incomplete. And Alcorn have messed around and got a stop. That's a three and out, and the ball goes back to Alcorn State. First and ten for Alcorn State. I'm still heat checking. I am still heat checking in double coverage. You better believe it. There's number five. It's a 30-yard plus completion already in Alabama territory. How he came down with this ball? I don't know, but I don't put question marks where there are periods. It is now first and 10 ball at the Alabama 44, taking a snap, going up top to number five again. You better believe he caught that thing inside the 10. You better believe he caught that thing. Them boys, them boys are serious. 294 passing yards already for number one. Already, just because we're going deep. It's 21-13, got the ball inside the 10, going to run the option. What a Perfect pitch for the touchdown right there. An absolute perfect pitch. The timing at the absolute last second. I pitch this thing, get this thing into the end zone, and it is 28 to 13. Two and a half to go in the first half. Here's Parker Wilson going to throw this thing. It's caught, but it's shy of the first down. Second and four. Wilson still looking to pass. Going up top, my DB is there. He doesn't have the highest rating, but he has that speed. So he was step for step. 81 gets hurt, though. It's third and four. Taking the snap. Wilson, all day to throw. Where's anybody? That should have been intercepted. 
It should have been intercepted, but it wasn't. Second and 10, two plays later, ball at the 50. Parker Wilson's going to step back to throw, avoid a sack, and just when I thought he was hurt, Keith Brown is right back in the game, and he's got a touchdown. Alabama closes the gap. This And you look at how close this was to being intercepted. I mean, I'm right there. Come on now. But got to give credit where credit is due. That's an absolute dot. We take a 28-20 lead into halftime on the road. I do not normally do this, but I'm showing you halftime stats. 330 passing yards and three TDs for my quarterback in the first half. Number five has 191 on seven catches. Number 82 has 139 on six catches, and they have three TDs combined. Second half starts. Alabama gets it first. Here's Parker Wilson under center. Fakes the hand off the coffee. Has all day to throw. Made a sandwich back there. Called his mama. Finds a wide open Keith Brown for a first down Crimson Tide. First and 10. Ball at the Braves 33 yard line. I need to hold them to three or less. There's Glenn Coffee making and shaking and baking. Gets close to a first down. Second and inches now. Ball at the 23, fakes the handoff, goes over to the fullback, gets the first down, just enough. Needed some inches, and he got a couple yards, so you got to give it to him. Ball at the 20-yard line. They are now in the red zone. Parker Wilson stepping back, looking to throw, avoiding the pressure, finds a wide-open man. That is DJ Hall inside the 10, and now Alabama has a chance. They are smelling. Oh, they can smell the end zone. First and goal from the 8. Glenn Coffey, finally. We get him down. He fumbles. He was actually down, but Alabama recovered anyway, so they didn't need to challenge it. Second and goal. Ball at the eight. Man in motion. Wilson takes a snap. Fakes the handoff to Coffee. Looks, throws in the flat. We get him down immediately. It is third and goal, and we got a chance here. We have to get this stop. Parker Wilson looking, still looking. Has time to call his mama. See how she doing. Finds an open man, but we force the fumble, and we don't recover it. But we get the stop. But we get the stop. So Alabama is forced to kick a field goal to start the second half, and Alcorn State keeps their lead. It is 28-23 midway through the third quarter. Here's more special teams. Why? Big player boo-boo, right? Well, here comes Mambo number five with the 96 speed. You ain't going to catch him. He is gone, brother, gone. Touchdown on the kick return. Are you serious? Oh, I told you, them boys came to play. We had more blockers than they had attackers when they kicked it that side. He swims the wrong way. Let me go back. This defender swims the wrong way. It springs open the returner, and number five is gone. And Alcorn State leads this thing 35-23. And we are kicking off to Alabama, and they trying to return the favor. Look at him trying to return the favor. Look at him. Look at him go. Across midfield, inside Braves territory, but we get the touchdown saving tackle. It's first and 10 at the 45. They'll hand this thing off to Coffee, and he gets blasted. We slowing him down. Second and seven for Alabama now. Parker Wilson faking the handoff, faking the end around, looking to throw, still looking, and he gets sacked. Oh, this defense is fired up now. Third and 12 for Alabama. We have to get this stop. Oh, my goodness, if we can get a stop right here. He dips under the sack, throws this thing up wide open is DJ Hall. Catching that thing in stride for the Alabama touchdown. And, yeah, they, they saying roll, tie, roll. It's 35-30. That pass is almost picked to start the next drive, and I didn't like that one at all. Second and 10, under a minute to go in the third quarter, taking the snap out of the gun. Throwing that pass is almost intercepted, and I am thanking my lucky stars that it was not picked off. Third and 10. Somebody catch my football. Well, you can if you throw it like that, can you, huh? Fourth down, we had to punt. First and 10 for Alabama. Got to get a stop. Here's Parker Wilson looking to throw. Finding a wide open man in the middle. That's a tight end. That's a first down, Alabama. I don't know what my defense is doing in the secondary. I really don't. I'm calling all kind of zone. First and 10 for Alabama. Ball at the 28. Here's a fake handoff to Glenn Coffey. Throw the next pass is intercepted. This defense came to play. And that's the right outside linebacker, the highest rated defender on the Alcorn State Braves. So it is first down for Alcorn State throwing this thing up top. Mambo number five. A little bit of a go route. 
Put your fours up. It's 35 30. First and 10. Ball inside the Alabama 30 yard line. Going and it's dropped by my running back. Second and 10. Taking the snap. Running those slants. Finding our man. It's only a gain of five, so it is now third and five. Ball at the 23. Taking the snap. Looking, looking, and sacked. But you know what? I don't trust HBCU kickers like that in this video game, so I went ahead and said, I'm going for it. Because why not? Fourth and 14. Ball at the 32. Alabama crowd is into it. Rolling out of the pocket. Throw in the middle of the field, and it's caught for the first down. Number 84. First down ball at the 13. Watch this right here. Pitch it. I hit the button. He didn't do it. I hit the button and he didn't do it. If I pitch it right there, right there, that's a walk-in touchdown, folks. But I hit the button. He didn't do it. So it's second and 11. Ball at the 14. And this is oh! the play that changes the game. What they say? And that was the game's turning point. That's the defensive end taking it to the 35. That ball went from inside the Alabama 20 to the Alcorn State 35. Immediately. It wasn't even, it wasn't even like, you know what I'm saying? It was at a, it was an instant. It wasn't gradual. So now it's a whole different game. Alabama's got the momentum, and everybody knows old Mo is a fickle man. Word to Charles Davis. Second and five. Ball at the 30. Hand this thing off to Glenn Coffey. Shaking and baking. Ain't nobody gonna touch you anyway, my brother. Touchdown, Alabama, and for the first time today, they lead. For the first time today, they lead. They've been losing the whole time. They decide to go for two. They give to the fullback. He gets it. And all of a sudden, I'm down by three when I had a chance to extend the lead to two possessions late in the fourth quarter. So now I'm down by three. 2.44 to go. 38-35. Looking to throw. It's caught, but then it's dropped. He took a big hit. Can't blame him. Second and ten. Looking to throw. It's caught. First down. Alcorn State. Keep doing that. That's all I need y'all to keep doing is keep catching my football, right? They stop doing it immediately. This is when my team decides to stop catching the football. There's number seven with a drop. Second down. Looking to throw. Going up top. I got my man. He can't catch it. You've been catching stuff in double coverage all day. But now he stops. Third and ten. Looking. Avoiding the sack. It's caught. It's dropped. And now it's fourth down. Can y'all please, somebody, anybody catch my football? No. No one catches the football. So, it is a turnover on downs after the Castile deflection. Alabama gets the ball back. They trying to rub it in my face, trying to go up top. Incomplete pass there by Parker Wilson. It is now third and four, and we have a chance here to get the ball back with some time. Here's Parker Wilson out of the gun, looking to throw. Looking, goes outside. This pass is caught along the sideline. I challenge it because I do not think he's in bounds. I do not believe he's in bounds. But if you see here, he barely, barely has that foot down as he gets possession. So the play stood. I lose a timeout. So it's first and 10 inside the Alcorn State 20 yard line. There's more play action. They go to the tight end, but we get them out of bounds. That's just as good as calling a timeout. That works. If they want to pass, let them pass. 2.07 to go. Second and nine. They're going to run the option. And why can't y'all stop John Parker Wilson? He's not even that fast. He gets it inside the five yard line, and now it's first and goal for Alabama. Ball at the three. Play action. Going to the wide open tight end. Touchdown, Alabama. And now they have a 10 point lead after the extra point. It is 45 to 35. I do want to say, I did score a touchdown and make it interesting. Touchdown number 82 on another go route. It's 45-42 after the PAT, but this is the world's worst onside kick I have ever seen. The world's worst. What was that? I told you, I don't be trusting the HBCU kickers. What in the world was that? 45-42 is your final score. Alabama escapes. Alabama escaped, and it all goes back to that one interception. The one interception. Take a look at the stats. These teams were pretty evenly matched today. 447 total yards for Alcorn State, 452 for Alabama. They both had 17 first downs. They kind of split their yards up, 181 on the ground, 271 through the air. I had 463 passing yards and negative 16 rushing yards. We collected three sacks. They only sacked us once. We were 0 for 6 on third down. They were 3 of 5. 
John Parker Wilson finished with a 165.4 passer rating, 18 to 27 for 271. He had three touchdowns, but he also had three interceptions. Take a look at Alcorn State, 19 of 39, 463 yards. What else can the brother do? What else can the brother do? Oh yeah, he also threw four touchdowns. But that one interception, the one interception, the one interception, that's what got him the deck. Glenn Coffey, nine carries, 168 yards on the ground, three TDs. When he got going, he got going. But for the most part, we had him contain just too many explosive plays. DJ Hall, four catches, 100 yards, and a touchdown. Nine catches, 236 yards for number five, and he also had a kick return TD. Number 82 had 208 receiving yards and three touchdowns on nine catches. What else can you do? What else can you do? You have two receivers go for over 200 yards, you get a kick return touchdown, you pick off the opposing quarterback three times, three times, and you still lose. Why? because of that one interception in the red zone. The one interception, that one mistake. And it shows you how fragile that line is between getting an upset as an HBCU team and losing. It's very fragile. But that, ladies and gentlemen, is an instant classic. And we will have more games like that coming up, I promise you. It's your boy Five Wars D. One love.